Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, oh, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, I love all y'all. Hey, it's a little Beyonce to start your week off, to start your Super Bowl Sunday. If you listen to this when this drops, if not, I hope you had a wonderful weekend and I hope you enjoyed watching the Rihanna concert. Because really, the Super Bowl is the Rihanna concert, um, as far as your astrologer is concerned. Um, also, a great day for great commercials. Um, if that's even still going to be a thing in the future, because um, I'm hearing some things on the advertisement side that because we've gone so social media focused, that Gen Z might kind of be eliminating some of the the necessity for big brands and businesses to invest all the like millions of dollars that they put towards Super Bowl because uh, Gen Z and younger, they're not really watching the televisions. They're not really on the tubes. If it's not 
a YouTubes. So anyway, we'll see. But I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you enjoyed me serenading you with Beyonce lyrics. That's Beyonce of yesteryear, okay? That was off her first solo album. And, you know, I just love that because, of course, she sings about all 12 signs. Um, anyway, we have a rocking and rolling week. Now, this is one of those weeks that it's exciting, and, and I've, I've given it a quote because I was putting everything together, and I was like, you know what? This quote is kind of coming to me, and I'm going to let this blanket the week. But the quote for this week is, agree to agree to Wusa. dot, 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 exciting times ahead. We have a lot of agreement contractual things it that's the energy of this week we're making contracts so whether you experience this week coming up and you're signing deals you're shaking hands or it's within yourself you know what i have had enough of acting like this proceeding like this i'm gonna tell myself i'm making a contract a deal within myself to never do this you know what let's actually change that Not to never do something, but I am now uh, making a deal with myself that this is this is how I'm moving forward. This is how I will show up in relationships. This is how I process. This is how I uh, uh, hmm. this is how I act uh, in the highest version of myself. You know, I'm within my highest good, but also what's in the highest good for others. Sun's still in Aquarius until the end of the weekend. But we have a lot of that kind of energy this week of making a deal, making a contract, um, shaking some hands. And sometimes that's more internally than it is externally. But both are in the, the sky this week, okay? So what are you ready to commit to? Who are you ready to commit to? Who are you ready to go deeper with, right? Within the relationships and and collaborations that you're already in, right? Romantically, platonically, professionally. Which ones are you willing to go deeper? And which ones are you like, I'm good where they're at? And which ones are you kind of like, "Mm, you're a little suspect. So I don't know. You know, I just don't know yet. You know, I, I, we, I might be retracting some of my energetic deposits your way. I might, I might have to remove or just lessen the amount I um, am, am donating to you, right? That I'm depositing into you, that I'm investing into you. I'm, you know, just kind of give a good, just give that a good think this week. All right, we have so many planetary highlights. We start the week with a Scorpio quarter moon on Monday. That's stress. We've got a Venus-Neptune conjunction. That's where this agreement contract energy comes in. We have the very next day on Thursday, a Sun-Saturn conjunction, another agreement, connection, um, a shake-hand moment. Saturday, Pisces season begins. We are ready to go from the air. We're up in the clouds. We're above the clouds. And then we swan dive down into the deep ocean for Pisces season. 30 days of reflection, resetting, rejuvenation, rebirthing, all of that type of energy, spirituality, creativity. You know, we're going to be listening to lots of music. We might be diving into nostalgia. We might just be giving ourselves the collective <sighs> that we need. Should we uh, choose or should we make that deal with ourselves? Very much, very much. So you see how this is all playing into this uh, make a contract, make a deal energy? And then to just end the week, like literally within minutes, end the week with a Pisces new moon which we're going to talk about the manifestation part of that. So I hope you are ready for a an exciting week. It really is. We're agreeing to agree to WUSA because there are exciting times ahead. Now, I'm also, this episode, going to be giving all the signs a little Valentine's Day horoscope. Are you ready for that? Because, indeed, Tuesday is Valentine's Day. Maybe for you it's a Galentine's Day. Maybe for you it's a friend's 
in time day. Uh, I think there is a, isn't there like a clever little phrase for when it's your friends? I mean, I know Galentine's is like, you know, the girls are all coming together, but, you know, kind of for everybody, all encompassing. Maybe I should have made up one before I recorded. But yeah, I'm going to give you a Valentine's Day horoscope. And it doesn't matter if you are single. It doesn't matter if you're coupled up. It doesn't matter if you're married. It doesn't matter if you're new. This horoscope is going to be for you on that day. Whatever to, even if Tuesday means absolutely nothing to you, it is like Hallmark, you know? And if they had consulted an astrologer, we all would have told them. Do it during Pisces season. It's way more romantic. Or let's just make it, you know how the Lunar New Year with Chinese astrology, it always just follows the new moon, the first new moon of a new new year, new calendar year. We should do it like let's find when Venus is in Pisces and maybe, well, what I'm about to say is actually really positive this year with Valentine's Day being when it is, because at least Venus is in Pisces, Neptune's in Pisces, and they meet the day after Valentine's Day. So that Venus-Neptune conjunction, it's actually one of the most romantic energies of just... It's just one of the most romantic energies. You got Venus in La La Land. Remember, she's got those rose-colored glasses on coming up to Neptune in Pisces where he's just like romanticizing and dreaming and really just like, oh, boy, that's a great, mm-hmm, I like this. And the two, together, you know, the love goddess and Neptune, the sea god come together and they kind of like, you know, they bat, they bat their eyes. They kind of send a little wink to each other like, well, hey, <laughs> you want to put your arms around my waist? You want to like you know, slow dance a little bit? You want to grind up a little bit? What you want? What You know what? Sip a little of this like good, good vintage wine. Let me put a grape in your mouth a little bit. Let me just like a little cheese and crackers. Let me make you a good charcuterie board. But, you know, this is the type of energy that's coming. So this year is actually a pretty romantic time for Valentine's Day. Normally it's just like, bleh. you know, like really? Valentine's Day and Aquarius season, you know, we're just, we're so cerebral during Aquarius season. And this is not to say that Aquarians aren't romantic. They definitely have an innovative approach towards romance. I myself have, you know, soireed with a handful of Aquarians. And there were definitely moments of excitement and like, oh my God, like that is such an unexpected way of celebrating or such an unexpected gesture and it and it has its own flair that it's actually you know really great but for the collective in general Aquarius is not the first sign you go to to like you know be like all ooey gooey do you know dove eyed dove bushy tailed and just like seeing rainbow stars and butterflies it's it's not you know, and that's fine. I'm not talking. I'm not talking trash. I'm not talking trash. I'm just saying, in general, what what the energy suggests. Okay. Um, but this year we actually have it's nice, and so I'm going to give you horoscopes. So it doesn't matter, even if you're just going to like spend the day alone. It doesn't matter if you're like, bleh, bah humbug. You know, the Scrooge of Valentine's Day. I'm just going to give you a little suggestion, a little horoscope to say, like, hey, if this is your sign, you know, go do this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview 
on drunkastro.com. There's a whole page there for it. And I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year. Because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you. And there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series. I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. Not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a Beachbody super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your, um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe. Enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be. There's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need. Okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. So before we get to the horoscopes, let's go through the news board, which actually has some pretty exciting, it's got some pretty exciting things. So I'm going to kind of slow my roll so that I get through these things, you know, in a way that we can all kind of like celebrate together because this is stuff that is really worth celebrating. First and foremost, we are now at 20 subscribers for A Daily Dose of Stars. Erica Renee, she is our 20th subscriber. Shout out to you. Now, right before I pressed record on this podcast, Erica had sent me a DM about A Daily Dose of Stars. So I want to read this to you. Erica, thank you so much. You know, this, this, this is why I do this stuff. But this is what Erica says. Hi, friend. Just wanted to tell you that I appreciate you and what you do. Your daily subscription episodes are everything I didn't know I needed in my life. You say things and then I go about my day and I'm like, mind blown. This is what he meant. You make life make sense. Thank you for what you do. Rooting for you to hit that 100. Now, you see, this is literally why I do what I do. I want to make life make sense to you, and I want you to be able to work with 
the, the energy of the moment. I want you to work with the energy that is presented to you, and I want you to lean in or avoid certain things, and this is what we do on Daily Dose of Stars. I will tell you this is the day to do X, Y, and Z. This is not the day to do da-da-da-da-da. And when the nodes are direct, that is, that's when you know. Now, I will say, you know, the, 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 when the nodes go direct, that is something that is going to, that's going to be on the, the daily doses. And we actually already have already had a day this month where daily dosers got that, got that little insight into, hey, by the way, the node is direct, so this is the day to go to go out and about, to shake some hands, to send a note, to, you know, make a make an important phone call. It is the day that when the nodes are direct, it's when you level up your life. You you make a connection or you send a note that will elevate you to the next level of your life. You are planting a seed at a time when the universe is like ripe for growth and development towards your destiny, towards your fate, towards your dream, towards your vision. So if you want that kind of information, the link is in the show notes. It's right underneath like the episode info, right? So wherever you're listening, just like scroll up and you're going to see the information about a daily dose of stars and you're going to get life-changing information as it's happening in real time. I post at 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific. If you're anywhere else, adjust for your time zones so that when you wake up or right when you're starting your day, you know exactly what's coming ahead. And along these notes, well, first of all, let me just say this. There are subscriber perks, of course. You're going to get this you know, life-altering information that's already there's already so much value in the information you're getting because you're learning to create your dream life in sync with the stars when you have the most support behind you so you're not just blindly going about life like what is going on i wish i understood that's already a perk but also on all the events and products and offerings that i'm offering in drunk astrology you're going to get discounts on everything and i'm going to i'm going to talk about that in a second but this is what I, this is what i want to i want to bring to your attention so my podcast platform is Buzzsprout, and they just released this this subscriber option right where you can offer premium content for a price so daily dose $10 a month and you get podcast episodes, you know, it's like two to four minutes per episode um, each and every day to set you on course for your day, right? I want you to be able to get in, get the information you need, and go on about your day and keep things in mind. Well, I listen to my platform's weekly podcast because I want to know how they're growing and I want to know how they're moving. Well, (laughs) I was listening to their podcast for this week or last week, I'm sorry, and at, at towards the end of the episode, they start talking about subscriptions and they have like an internal leadership board for the podcast that are offering subscriptions. And I, I, I learned just in dealing with, um, you know, having some like back and forth with their support team. I learned that my podcast was one of the ones, one of the first to launch subscriptions. So I was listening and they <laughs> eventually start talking about this one podcast and they start dropping statistics and i was like hey wait a minute <laughs> this is my podcast <laughs> so they didn't name it but they started talking i mean i know all my stats i stay up on um yeah you know, i stay up on everything about the business because hello i'm a solopreneur it's just me doing this so you know i i have an eye and ear on everything that i do and that i offer and i i'm stay up on my stuff yeah i'm a good virgo like that so as they're dropping stats, the other two hosts of the show like lose their mind that I had uh, at the time they recorded that episode, I had 16 subscribers and it had only been the first week. So, you know, the other two hosts are like, "Oh my god, like this isn't even like this isn't like a top 1% or top 3% podcast." I'm in the top 25% on the platform. 
you know? So they were like, holy Lord, like this content must be really good. And this is the quote that the owner of the platform had to say. And th- I, this just made me really happy. But he said, this is someone who has a deep connection to their audience. The audience really loves this. Like they are really enjoying it. And that's why they subscribe. And that right there made my heart go like pitter patter, pitter patter. Because, you know, they're not listening to the podcast. They're just following stats and they have this internal leadership board. And apparently this week with Drunk Astrology is, you know, climbing the leadership board with um, with the subscriptions. So they don't know that we have the internal goal, you and me together, to reach 100 subscribers by the end of February. But I'm going to say that my Leo Venus, which is a competitive nature. Now, I'm not competitive in life, but now that I know, like, wait a minute, (laughs) I'm climbing the leaderboard? And, you know, Buzzsprout has, like, celebrity podcasts and things, you know? Like, we're in the top 25%, which is no small feat, you know? We're in our third year of this podcast, and, like, I'm very proud of the growth and, you know, and everything. But to just have the platform itself look at our numbers and say this is obviously someone who has a deep connection to their audience, because I do. When I meet you, I mean, I have met more of you this year. Once PayPal split payments came in and all of you like went and booked readings and I've been meeting you one by one and we're working together now to really help you get a gauge and on understanding yourself, understanding the timing of your life. I do feel deeply connected. So I know there's a lot of you that listen to this podcast that I haven't met yet. But I do feel deeply connected. And when I get messages like Erica sends me or when I get other messages from, you know, clients or just people that that follow along, that listen and say that they're being they're able to fix their relationship stories by connecting the dots with the information I provide. I just, you know, I my heart beams really big and really loud. And I just thank you. Thank you. You know, thank you for listening to me every week. Thank you for the 20 people that have already subscribed. And I hope that we get more more of you in Daily Dose because I'm only going to enhance the content. Like all the aspects this week, Daily Dosers are going to get hacks for this energy and really like get this deeper understanding of like how you can work with this, how you can be conscious about what is happening, what might seem like an ordinary day. You're just waking up and just kind of like da 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 da. Astrology has another layer to it. You know, there's another layer of saying, no, it's not just another day. This is the day I need to be conscious about what seeds I'm planting. And that's the type of information. So I hope that more of you come over, more of you subscribe because I really want to help you change your life. I really want to help you understand the events of your day. And I want you to understand how to look at life and look at your decisions, look at your surroundings, look at everything because everything is a part of everything. It just it just is, okay? Now, last little things of, of news board items that I want to get to. And then we're going to get to your horoscopes. But I have the Pisces new moon, like I said, is at the very end of this weekend. And it is on Sunday the 19th. If you're on the East Coast, it's technically Monday the 20th. But I have three different ways for you to manifest with intention and understanding. And just I want you to consciously press the refresh refresh button in your life, okay? It is opening up an, an opportunity to end and begin again, okay? And I have three different ways for you to do that. If you are not local to LA or the SoCal area, I have a virtual new moon manifestation workshop this Friday. It's only an hour. It's at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, but it's gonna be, I'm gonna send the video. So if you you can't even be there live, you don't even worry about it. I'm gonna send everyone who attends, I'm gonna send you the link, and you'll be able to watch it at your own time, at your own pace. That's Friday the 17th. So sign up. I'm going to put the events link in the show notes. So again, all you got to do is just scroll up 
and you're going to see the information. There's contact info and, you know, whatever. But I'm going to put the link to the events right there in the show notes. So it's just all it is is a scroll up and a click. Now, if you are in the L.A. slash SoCal area, you have in-person options. On Saturday the 18th, I'm going to have a manifestation workshop at The Hangout in Long Beach on 4th Street. Okay, so at The Hangout from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., we're going to be there. We're going to be manifesting. We're going to be in person. We're going to talk about things. We're going to do all kinds of things. Um, but we're going to get you set up with manifesting, um, pushing the refresh button in a, in a very conscious way. And then those of you that are in the L.A. area, on Sunday the 19th at 6.30 p.m., we are going to be doing the New Moon Manifestation Workshop at Tansy Nursery and Shop. This is my second in the series of New Moons. So if you were there for the Lunar New Year at Tansy, Please come back and bring your notebook, bring your pieces of paper because we're going to read out all the wins. I'm going to be sharing my wins because there have been a lot already and we're not even fully through with that new moon cycle yet. So there's going to be a lot to share. But we also have the lovely ladies of Because I Rock coming there. They bring raw crystals directly from the mines and the caves. They're still dirty and you give birth to the crystal. You will clean it. So like you're looking at like a rock with a bunch of dirt on it. You can't even tell like what the the stone is. And then they give you the solution, the water, the toothbrush, all the materials. And as you start cleaning this rock, the crystal that is like revealed to you that is like just it's 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 beautiful. I I first did it with them um, right before my Lunar New Year manifestation. Uh, workshop in January and it was it's I have this like beautiful smoky quartz that has a little bit of like amethyst in it when you hold it up to the light you can see the streaks of purple it's crazy so anyway they're going to be there no better time to cleanse and give birth to your very own crystal I mean you're cleaning off millions of years of dirt and history and then it's yours, and you take it with you, and it, it, it really is. I mean, this Smoky Quartz is just so special to me because I wasn't expecting it. So I got them. They're coming. We're going to do an hour of manifesting and then 30 minutes of crystal birthing, shall we call it. All right, let's move on. That's the news board items. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, my gosh, the last thing. I put this in the news list, um, but yours truly, Drunk Astrology. Um, now at the Line Hotel, every single Tuesday in Koreatown, in LA, doing card readings from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the lobby during happy hour. I, like, it's, this is something that's been in the works since September last year. Right before my birthday, like three days, I had my first meeting with them. And here we are. Last week, February 7th, was my first day, and now I'm going to be there for Valentine's Day giving card readings. So if you're in the L.A. area, come to the Line Hotel. Every single Tuesday, I'm there, 5.30 to 7. Um, I have an event calendar on the homepage at DrunkAstro.com, so you can see all of that there. Um, But it's just one of the most exciting just kind of like evolutions of drunk astrology, like really getting out and, you know, not just casting my net to, you know, the world, you know, being available everywhere, but also to the LA community that I've been living in for almost 19 years now. It's crazy. Let's get to your Valentine's horoscopes, right? All right. Thank you for, for just all the, that, you know, thank you for listening. But here we go. Valentine's horoscopes. Let's just go right down the line. Fire, earth, air, water. So Valentine's Day, we know, is just, you know, it's a celebration of romance, connection, partnership. Well, this Valentine's Day, we have this element of adventure, okay? We've got the moon in Sagittarius. So fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag. It's about you. I think you should be spontaneous. You should do something out of the norm. Do something out of the box. Kind of, whether it's like you by yourself or you with somebody or maybe you with, you know, a group of friends. However, for you all, it's like, you know, 
take a little trip, take a little, like, go outside, be outside for sure um, in some in some capacity. But you should do something, like, expressive, do something bold, go somewhere different, go somewhere new. Um, kind of fly by the seat of your pants if you're a fire sign. Now, earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, you guys should go with the flow. You should just say, hey, why don't we, like... Let's kind of like make it up as we go. How about that? You know, I I know that's one thing that Herman and I are going to be doing. Because one, I'm going to be at the Lion Hotel giving readings from 530 to 7. But then like there's this energy for the earth signs this year to just, just, just flow with it. You know, don't try, don't be rigid. Kind of just like the, the most romantic part of your evening or your day should just be this like, Oh, yeah, let's just kind of create this as we go. Now, the air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. This is really like you all might want to do like group celebrations, you know, whether it's with your friends or whether it's like you're going on a triple date with different couples. But you all should definitely like partner up. You guys should not be alone this Valentine's Day, okay? Now, earth signs are kind of the only signs I'm going to give that pass to. Um, you know, if, if the earth signs are like, you know, whether you're coupled or singled or not, if you all want to be, be alone and kind of go with the flow with yourself and just kind of like, mm, let's see what I'm feeling. Maybe it's a bath, some wine and some grapes and some music. I'm going to give that to the earth signs, but air signs, you guys should be out and about in the community with your friends, with your loved ones and like a bunch of different couples. You all should be doing some kind of group outing like that. And then for the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, you all might feel like you need to kind of like penny pinch a little bit, but you all should kind of explore, explore like, like how can you do Valentine's Day for $100 or less? Some kind of like challenge where you're like, you're, you're being conscious of the, the money you're spending, the time you're spending, um, and, and, you know, who you're spending it with, whether you're alone or with somebody. But, you know, if you're going to be with somebody, it should be like someone who's really bringing value to your life, right? Just on a practical, just supportive daily basis. Like these are the, you know, you spend Valentine's Day with with your support system, but kind of do like make it cool, make it fun. But, you know, that's the kind of challenge I encourage you to do if you're a water sign. You know, how can we do this? How many different things can we do for under a hundred dollars? And that alone is an adventure in itself, and I just think that would be, like, a great idea for the water sign. So try that. You know, create your own challenge if you don't like the one that I suggested, but try it out. Now, let's go into the planetary aspects for the week. Like I said, there's a lot. I'm going to kind of zoom through them so I don't keep you too long. Um, But keep in mind, daily dosers, you're going to get the daily breakdowns for each of these things. So, you know, you're going to be good. Like I said in the beginning, we start the week on Monday with a Scorpio quarter moon at 8.01 a.m. Pacific. That is a, um, that's all the times I give you are Pacific standard, so make sure you adjust for your time zones. Quarter moons are stressful, and it's a, it's a need for balance. It's a need for, you know, to really kind of say, all right, I need to overcome this by doing something um, so how do I counteract? The question is, how can you counteract the stress? Now, I'm going to give a hack to the daily doser so, because it's going to take a little bit more time that we just don't have right now for this podcast. On Wednesday, we've got the Venus-Neptune conjunction at 425 a.m. So I want you to keep in mind that anytime planets come together and form a union called a conjunction, They are striking a deal. Venus is about love, money, desire. Neptune is about dream, vision, your subconscious. So it's something that you want to like keep in mind. Now, this is like I said, this has a blanket of romanticism all over it. So just bask in romance, bask in. If I'm going to give you a day that I'll allow the rose colored glasses, like you can keep them on. Remember when I said Venus went into Pisces and I said, hey, Beware the rose-colored glasses. Just be able to be like, pull the glasses down and go, oh, okay, that's reality. Got it. But for now, I'm going to keep these on. 
if I'm going to give you a pass and I say just keep the rose-colored glasses on, I'm going to say 14, 15, you know, Valentine's Day and the day after. Those are the days to just to just do that, okay? Then moving on to Thursday the 16th, Sun has a conjunction to Saturn. So hear that again. There's another agreement. There's another deal. The sun is your life force. It's your vitality, right? And Saturn is about authority and discipline, commitment. So keep in mind what you're going to be committing to. Daily dosers, we're going to go in. We're going we're gonna to go dive into another level of this. But everyone, just, just know these are your days for commitments and agreements. Friday, we have a Mercury-Jupiter sextile. This is great forward motion. Mercury is flying high in Aquarius. He loves this sign. He loves this energy. What is good for me is also good for the collective. And Jupiter says, yeah, let's amplify that message. Let's amplify the actions we take, the, the people we talk to. Let's carry that message forward. Saturday, Pisces season begins at 2.34 p.m. Let me tell you something. Just I made a video of this on Instagram. And if you didn't see it, I, I encourage you to go find that. But Pisces season starts at 2.34 p.m. on Saturday the 18th. That means if someone is born at 2.32 p.m. or even 2.33 p.m. on Saturday, they are a 29 degrees Aquarius. This is why your birth time is so important because just because you're born on the day the sun switches, the time is muy, muy, muy importante, okay? It's okay if you don't have it, but I'm just saying there's so many people out there that are like, no, I was born on the 18th, so I'm a Pisces, and not necessarily, and sometimes the sun changes on the 19th. Anyway, I don't want to digress, but I'm just saying keep that in mind. That's a little information about what it means to be born on the cusp. Because you're going to be one or the other. That's why the time is so important. Astrology is just math and science, people. It's so exact, it's crazy. Okay, then on Sunday, the Pisces new moon is at 11.06 p.m. So that's the, all, that manifesta- uh, all the manifestation workshops. That's why it's this coming weekend, virtual 17th, the hangout in Long Beach on the 18th, and then Tansy on the 19th. Also on Sunday, though, Venus has a sextile to Pluto, so there's a forward motion there, money, authority, connection, relationship. And then minutes before Monday the 20th, minutes before, at 11.56 p.m., Venus enters Aries. When I tell you next week, next week is going to start with a huge energy shift, okay? We have a Pisces new moon and then Venus, the love goddess, the connector, Going into Aries where she goes into warrior goddess mode. Okay, it's going to be it's gonna be quite a shift, okay? <laughs> so very busy week, lots of activity, lots of excitement. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day, even if it's just a day, just another day, and you don't care about it. I hope that you take that horoscope with you and just t- that's tapping into the energy of the day, you know? That that's how you can really work with the energy regardless of it being Valentine's Day or not. You know what I mean? But those of you that are celebrating, those of you that have a squishy, those of you that are single and mingling, those of you that are just like, "Hey, I'm kind of I'm alone, but I like I'm kind of good with that." Or if you're feeling lonely, you've got that horoscope to at least give yourself a great day. Okay, that's it for me. I'm going to catch you all the way through the week on social media, Instagram, and that's it. Have a wonderful week. All right, big, sending a big hug, like big hug, a big, deep connection, just like, mm, I'm squeezing you. All right, big love. Talk to you next week. Bye. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time, in motion. Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. 
I would appreciate it, they would appreciate it, and you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.